Hello! In this video, we will discuss learning curves. We will discuss bias variance trade off, and we will also introduce the concepts of feeding graphs and regularization. In the last few videos, we discussed the basic approach of supervised learning. Essentially, we want to find a mapping or a tunable function that fits the training data and produces an output y hat. This means that from the collection of possible tunable functions, we will select the function with parameters theta i to minimize the training error. If we have m training examples, the training error for a regression problem can be defined as the average sum of the squared discrepancies between the true labels and the output y hat for the selected function. In a classification problem, the approach is similar. We can count the number of incorrectly classified inputs and divide the results by the total number of training examples, in this case, m. We discussed model complexity, which is represented by the VC dimension, also known as the degrees of freedom. Higher degrees of freedom can be good or bad. It can be good because it represents more flexibility in the set of functions we can pick as there is a larger set of functions available. On the other hand, a higher VC dimension increases the chance of overfitting. This means that a complex function can represent the training data very well, but performs very poorly in terms of generalization or unseen data. Now, what can we do to avoid overfitting? One partial solution is collecting more training data. More data could reduce the impact of noise and can show the true representation of the problem you are trying to solve. Having more training data essentially reduces the opportunity for a random function to perform well only by chance. For example, if a professor gives you one multiple choice exam, there could be a high probability that someone in the class performs well just by guessing the answers. However, if the professor gives 10 exams, it is unlikely that someone performs well in all of them just by guessing the answers. We can observe the impact of training data with something known as learning curves. Learning curves are a plot of the generalization performance. They show the performance against the amount of training data. In a learning curve, the amount of training data is shown on the x-axis, and the accuracy, specifically the generalization performance, is shown on the y-axis. As we increase the amount of the data, the accuracy goes up because our model gets better at choosing the right function among the set of options. When we have more training data, it is less likely that we select the wrong function by chance. There is another way to look at this scenario, which is the concept of bias-variance trade-off. Bias and variance are two key components of the expected error in our context. Let's consider an example to explain this. Let's say that I have a thermometer at my house that always displays a temperature T that is 2 degrees higher than the real temperature. If the thermometer shows a temperature of 70 degrees, it is actually 68 degrees. In this context, we can say that our thermometer has a bias of plus 2 degrees. Now, Let's consider a different scenario. This time, let's say that, on average, my thermometer is right, but sometimes it shows 1 degree higher than the real temperature, and sometimes 3 degrees lower, and so on. So in general, there is a variation alpha. In this scenario, there is no bias, but there is a variance. Both bias and variance are undesirable, and can create errors in our predictions. Let's consider the space of functions in our model. Remember, when we have a simple model or a low VC dimension, it is easy to find the function within that space that best fits our data. In other words, if we have enough training data, it is easy to zoom in and find the best function available in that space. So there is not much variability or variance in the resulting function. This means that if you are given a different sample for your training data, you will end up with more or less the same function. However, since there are only a limited number of functions in your space to choose from, the performance might not be good enough. 
in this case, we could have high bias but low variance. On the other hand, in a big space with a large degrees of freedom, it is very likely that the space includes a function that does what you want. However, since there are too many functions in the space, it might be difficult to find the right one. In other words, it could be hard to zoom in to find the correct function because the space is large and thus we could have high amount of variance. That is, if you are given a different sample for your training data, you might end up with a completely different function. In this case, you have high variance but low bias. In summary, complex models usually have high variance, while simple models usually have high bias. At the end, the performance is affected by both variance and bias, so we need to find a sweet spot that prevents our model from overfitting and underfitting. Fitting graphs are very useful to describe this concept of bias-variance trade-off. These graphs show the performance of our model against its complexity. On the x-axis, we have the model complexity, and on the y-axis, we have the error. If we plot the training error, we will see that as the model gains complexity, the error decreases. This is because we have more flexibility, so we choose a function that best fits our training data. This shows in-sample performance. However, we don't care that much about in-sample performance, we do care about the out-of-sample performance, and we care about how good our model is in the real world. Therefore, we plot the test error. Here, we observe that the test error initially gets better as we increase model complexity. Remember, by increasing model complexity, we are lowering bias, which could explain this performance improvement. But as we increase the model complexity, the variance is increasing, which implies higher chances of overfitting. Thus, at some point, the overfitting starts to dominate and the error increases. Essentially, we want to avoid the regions with high bias and high variance. So we need to select a model complexity that belongs somewhere in between these regions so that we hopefully have low bias and low variance at the same time. Regularization is a very effective technique to avoid overfitting. The idea is to try to discourage learning a more complex or flexible model in the training phase. Specifically, instead of just optimizing the fit to the data, we optimize some combination of fit and model simplicity. For example, in our regression example, we could have used this technique by adding an extra term in the RSS which would have been the loss function we wanted to minimize. This term has a tuning parameter lambda that dictates how much we want to penalize the complexity of the model. Minimizing this new loss function automatically prevents the coefficients to be too large. This is how we control the complexity of the model. Selecting the right value of lambda is critical and can be accomplished by trying different values of lambda and using cross-validation. Specifically, you can compute the cross-validation error for different values of lambda and select a lambda that gives the smallest cross-validation error. After lambda is chosen, the model is refit using all the available data and the selected lambda. In summary, in this video, we discussed learning curves, which are useful for visualizing the impact of the amount of training data on the performance of our model. When we have more training data, it is less likely that we select the wrong function by chance. We talked about bias-variance trade-off and discussed that complex models tend to have high variance, which usually results in overfitting, while simple models tend to have high bias, which usually results in underfitting. At the end, the performance was affected by both variance and bias, so we needed to find the sweet spot to avoid overfitting as well as underfitting. We discussed the concept of fitting graphs, which are useful to describe the concept of bias-variance trade-off. These graphs show the performance of our model against its complexity. Finally, we talked about regularization, 
which is another technique that helps avoid overfeeding by discouraging learning a more complex or flexible model. It regularizes the coefficients of our model, penalizing too much flexibility.